So today we're going to cancel Dr. Jorge Caballero. Um, now, I will confess that I struggled a little bit with this cancellation. I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend a whole cancellation on Dr. Jorge, given that his offense is so commonplace and has been covered so many times on this show that it feels a little redundant. redundant. But as should be clear by now, the determining factor for who makes it on the daily cancellation is not the importance of the issue or even the entertainment value. It's just simply who has most recently annoyed me. And given that, um, I saw this tweet from Dr. Jorge this morning, and um, he has made the cut. And there are a couple things here that really push push him over the top, I think, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. So Dr. Jorge is a physician with a relatively large following on social media whose bio says, come for the facts, stay for the snark. And of course, includes a hashtag, uh, Black Lives Matter. The real M. Night Shyamalan sort of twist ending here is that he doesn't have his, his pronouns listed in his bio. I'm sure I'll get around to that. I hope he does actually get around to it because we are rapidly approaching a point where anybody who doesn't list their pronouns is a transphobe by default. We might already be there, in fact. So, in any case, a couple days ago, Dr. Jorge tweeted this. He said, I would like to go into a grocery store with my three-year-old and not have to feel like I'm risking his life or her life. Is that too much to ask? I'd like to go into a grocery store with my three-year-old and not have to feel like I'm risking her life. Is that too much to ask? But wait, there's more. Uh, Many of the comments responding to the good doctor's paranoid ramblings were all in agreement, commiserating with him. A quick sample, Tracy says, I shudder when I see two parents taking their unmasked less than five-year-olds into a store. What are they thinking? And Brooke says, two of my three kids have not been in a store or restaurant in nearly two years. Honestly, I feel like my mental health will never recover from finding out how awful the majority of Americans are about all of this. Well, I agree with you there, actually. I I think we're on the same page. Marta says, so it would seem for now, um, so it would seem for now, my five-year-old does not remember the inside of places. Jennifer says, I hear you, was in a Target today in Watertown, Massachusetts, barely any masks. I was livid, could feel my blood boiling. However, when I shop in grocery stores in Newton, Massachusetts, uh, almost everyone is masked. It's so, so hard. Another comment says, we're in full gear when we go into public. It's just the way we do it. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to? And a guy named Eric says, our 19-month-old has never even been in a store. I feel I fear he'll be too big to sit in the, in the front of the cart by the time it's safe for him to go grocery shopping with me. And Dr. Jorge responded to that one in a follow-up tweet, writing, I feel this in my soul. Kids, kids grow up so fast. It feels like the list of things that I'll never get to experience with my daughter grows longer by the day. Now, as I said, we have seen this sort of thing many times already. But here's what sent it over the edge for me. Dr. Jorge's username, his Twitter handle, is this. I'm not, make, I'm not making this up. It is Data Driven MD. Yes, he is the Data Driven MD. He is driven by the data, which is why he feels that he'd be risking his daughter's life by potentially exposing her to a virus that has a 99.999% survival rate for, for kids her age. And that actually overstates the risk to her. It's not that when she goes to a grocery store that there's a, you know, a 0.001% chance that she'll die. No, 0.001% is the risk of death if she contracts the virus. But what are the chances that she'll contract it? Children her age have a very small chance of even contracting the virus in the first place. Added to the fact that most of the adults that she encounters are vaccinated. Added to the fact that at a grocery store, she's not having sustained close quarters contact with anybody added to the very minuscule lethality of the virus for her age group, and for most every age group, by the way, run the calculations with all of those percentages taken into account, and her risk of COVID death from going to the grocery store is much, 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 much smaller than 0.001%. I wager that it's something like, you know, 0.000001%, though even that is probably a gross overestimation. And this risk... Um, a risk so vanishingly tiny as to be effectively non-existent has the data-driven MD paralyzed with fear. The data has driven him insane, it would seem. Except it's not the actual data that has done that to him. If this data, these numbers, could incapacitate him to that extent, then certainly he would never drive a car. The car trip to the grocery store is vastly more dangerous for both himself and his daughter than the grocery store itself. He would never ride an elevator or an airplane or cross a bridge. He'd never go inside any building for fear of roofs caving in and floors collapsing. He'd also never go outside for fear of falling trees, lightning strikes, 
If a 0 .00, et cetera, more zeros, 1% chance of death is too much to bear, then life itself is too much to bear. These kinds of risks are built into literally everything you do everywhere all the time, no matter what. Sometimes the risks are much larger. I wonder if Dr. Jorge has ever been on a roller coaster. Roller coasters are pretty safe, but your chance of injury or death is definitely greater than 0.001%. And meanwhile, it's a totally unnecessary, frivolous activity that you're paying money to participate in. Has Dr. Jorge ever been to the beach? Again, pretty safe, but there are sharks and riptides and accidental drownings. And you could avoid the beach your entire life and still live a relatively full and normal existence. Yet I bet he goes to the beach. Doesn't think about it. Has Dr. Jorge ever eaten at a restaurant? I mean, before COVID. Food poisoning, allergic reactions, choking. Has he ever, has he ever gone a, for a hike in the woods? Bear attacks, falling limbs. You could get lost. You could trip and break your ankle. You could get a, assaulted by a crazy drifter or, or by Bigfoot. Did you know that? Did you know that your chance of getting killed by Bigfoot in the woods is not 0%? Nobody can say that it's 0%. If you're worried about Bigfoot and you come to me and say, I'm going to the woods, I'm worried that Bigfoot um, might attack me. Do you think that that could happen? I would have to say, yeah, it could happen. I mean, it could. It probably won't. It's like really small chance, but it, I, it's not impossible. And given that uh, Dr. Jorge is worried about 0.000001% risks, he's, he's now in the realm of having to worry about Bigfoot. Actually, I don't want to scare him, but even if you stay out of the woods, your chance of getting beaten to death by Bigfoot is still not 0%. I mean, technically speaking, it's in the realm of possibility that Bigfoot could break into your home right now as you sit, pummel you senseless, kill your dog, set your house on fire. This could happen. The chance of that occurring is not zero. Have you taken any precautions? What is your Bigfoot home invasion contingency plan? You don't have one? What are you, anti-science? See, these are all data points that the data-driven MD has not taken into account, it would seem. And that's because he isn't driven by data so much as by feelings. And he even says so. Remember, he says, I would like to go to a grocery store with my three-year-old and not have to feel like I'm risking her life. Is that too much to ask? Which brings us finally to our answer. Yes, Doc, it's too much to ask. It is too much to ask that you be able to do something without feeling a certain way about it. It's too much to ask us anyway. It's too much to ask the world because we can't do anything about your irrational feelings. We can't control that. It's too much to ask of us. It's not fair to us. It's not fair that we should have to do anything at all, that we should have to in any way whatsoever account for, adjust ourselves for, work around your totally unreasonable and paranoid feelings. Your feelings are your problem. They're also your child's problem, sadly. And that's the real tragedy here. I frankly don't care if you want to huddle yourself inside for the rest of your life. Um, that might work out pretty well for the rest of society, honestly. But I do care that you're doing this to your child, who was cursed with an insane, psychologically abusive father, through no fault of her own. And that's why I really hope you do something about those feelings. You do something. Not us. You. Until then, you are canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.